we left off about here. We were talking about pleura and pleural fluid and the arrangement of the lungs <clears throat> and pleuritis, right? One of the things that I wanted to mention, though, before I go ahead, is a little bit more about ventilators. Um, before we used this external means of ventilation of pushing air into a patient's lungs, before that, we used machines that were like this that are called iron lungs, iron, iron lungs. And iron lungs were actually the first way that we had of breathing for a patient who couldn't breathe for themselves. Iron lungs create a vacuum inside of this big cylinder that the patient is inside of. And um, uh, it is more mm, natural to the lung tissue, but it's tremendously obtrusive, right? This is an enormous machine that the patients are in. You don't have direct access to any part of their body. You can't check their IVs. You can't check their reflexes. So it, it had a, a lot uh, of, of difficulties to it. Um, uh, so uh, iron lungs have pretty much been phased out, although there were thousands and thousands of them in use for a long period of time because of the polio uh, epidemic. Now we've got great polio vaccines. We don't see polio in the United States anymore. Um, but at one time, a lot of people lived on this kind of a uh, uh, respiratory system. Um, now we have uh, ventilators. Uh, ventilators and um, this kind of mechanical ventilation um, is is not is not a perfect solution, and so there is a new thing for patients, not for COVID patients, but there's a new thing for patients that are paralyzed, um, patients that have got a high, that are high quadriplegics, uh, they cannot breathe on their own, and they need a system to breathe for them, and so, um, but uh, they generally live on ventilators. However, there now um, are uh, diaphragm pacemakers that that trigger the diaphragm to contact, contract periodically, creating a more normal kind of respiration and, um, and a more, more natural uh, breathing experience. It doesn't bypass a huge chunk of your airways, uh, power to clean your lungs. Now, let's talk about a problem called a pneumothorax. Um, in the last uh, video, we were talking about how there always is this little bit of negative pressure inside of the pleural space. That intrapleural pressure is always negative, and that's what keeps the lungs attached to the inside of the thoracic wall. Um, now, if there is any breach in the pleural barrier, then either blood or fluid or air can be drawn into the pleural space. Uh, we're just gonna talk about air. Now, um, air that gets drawn into the pleural space is called pneumothorax. Pneumothorax is not another name for a collapsed lung, okay? Pneumothorax will generally cause a collapsed lung, but lungs can collapse for other reasons as well, okay? Uh, the name for a collapsed lung or part of a lung is atelectasis, and we'll mention that in a moment. Okay. Now, when will you see a pneumothorax? Pneumothoraxes can happen whenever there is a wound through the, the wall of the thorax. So if a patient has been stabbed with a knife or shot in the chest, that can cause a pneumothorax. Um, if a patient's been in a significant uh, trauma that has broken a rib so that the rib is poking through the wall of the chest, that actually can also be a breach of the thoracic wall and allow air into the lungs. Whenever you see external wounds of the rib cage, uh, it's good first aid to apply what's called an occlusive dressing to that wound of the rib cage. Um, to minimize air's ability to travel in if that wound goes all the way into the thoracic cavity. 
So because there is a negative, uh, a vacuum essentially in the pleural space, as soon as the chest wall is breached, air will go rushing in and be sucked in by every breath that the patient takes. Uh, it is also completely possible and not uncommon for the air that's leaking into the pleural space to come from the lung itself. Um, the, uh, the lung, particularly when it's compromised by a viral infection or frequent bacterial infections, can develop areas that are weakened and can just pop. And then any area that just pops, every time the patient inhales, it will bring air in and some of that air will go into this space here. The problem with that kind of pneumothorax is when the patient exhales, the air does not go back out the way it came. So every inhalation brings in air, every exhalation does not send it out. So a patient inhales and then inhales and then inhales, and then they can't inhale any further. Uh, so uh, pneumothorax. In the action movies, the hero's buddy gets a pneumothorax and he treats the pneumothorax by jabbing a tube into the buddy's chest and putting the other end of the tube into some water in like a great big soda bottle. And yes, that would work. And why does it work? It works because every time the patient exhales, there is a negative pressure here that is trying to push air out. And that air cannot go out the way it is, but it can go back out that way. And it'll go out and the bubbles will go out of the fluid. The amount of suction that will happen with the next inhale generally is not strong enough to bring a whole bunch of fluid into the chest. So um, that strategy um, is usually enough to keep the pneumothorax um, from completely collapsing the lung until a surgical repair can be done, okay? Yeah, these are not synonyms, okay? Atelectasis is a word that describes any kind of um, uh, consolidation of large numbers of alveoli in a lung. That would be atelectasis. Now, um, in the case of a pneumothorax, you're going to get atelectasis generally of one entire lung. Humans have a, medius, have a mediastinum that creates an intact barrier between their right and left halves of their thorax. Uh, dogs and cats don't. When, when humans get a pneumothorax, it generally will only collapse one lung lobe. So uh, score one for humanity. Um, but there are other causes of atelectasis. Um, uh, a patient, any kind of patient that undergoes any length of surgery generally will have areas of atelectasis in their lungs uh, because our way of mechanically ventilating is not completely efficient, just doesn't work as well as the real thing. Um, so when patients also are very inactive for long periods of time, like they're just sick with whatever, a uh, gallbladder problem, and they're just laying there feeling miserable on their left side, getting pain drugs for long periods of time, then they will develop areas where those pieces of lungs will look like that, okay? That is a collapsed lung lobe. So it's really easy to see, right? We've got an inhaling view. Here's our cardiac silhouette. There's the left side of the diaphragm. There's the right side of the diaphragm. You can see the diaphragm is asymmetrical because of that collapsed lung lobe. You know that this is all lung because even though, even though it's dark, do you see how you see all these little lines in it, okay? If there was a pneumothorax, there would be an area or a region where you don't see little lines in it because the air from the outside world doesn't have little lines in it, but the lungs, even healthy lungs, have some little lines in them. But this area here does not look like that area there. And that is because that lung lobe has collapsed. Lots of things can cause a collapsed lung. Like I said, it's very common to see like little areas of atelectasis 
um, in a patient's lungs after any kind of an anesthesia, um, a tumor that's obstructing a bronchus, that could be what's causing what's causing this collapse of a lung lobe, that there's, there's a tumor that's keeping air from going in and out. When a tumor keeps air from going in and out, the air that once was in those alveoli just slowly gets absorbed by the body. Um, a foreign body, like a marble being inhaled, can cause atelectasis. Real serious pneumonia. If, if this collapsed lung was this, was this one down here, we would be assuming that it is being caused by um, an, a pneumonia. Um, lack of surfactant in, in patients with, with SARS or um, patients with other um, acute respiratory uh, syndromes um, <clears throat> can uh, cause atelectasis. Uh, smoke inhalation, you know, some all the time in movies, you see the hero rescue someone from the smoke and they just step outside and take a deep breath of air and they cough and they're, they're like, oh, that was a close one. No, they could end up dying. Uh, smoke inhalation um, does enough damage to the um, airways and to the alveoli that even though people feel fine in that first hour after they get out of the building um, later on that night, they, they can have um, severe atelectasis and they can also have acute respiratory um, distress and uh, a pleural effusion. There are lots of things that will cause fluid to build up in this airway <clears throat> of the pleural cavity, and those things will also collapse the lungs, all right? All righty, let's see. Yes, we will start here at the beginning of the next video.